Hey everybody, John Schumacher here with NewWaveHealthcare.com and today my guest is Aaron LeBauer of LeBauer Consulting and Aaron helps people, helps therapists build, grow and market cash-based therapy practices. So that's our discussion today, cash-based therapy. So Aaron, thank you so much for coming on the show and, and sharing some knowledge, dropping some knowledge for all of us today. Uh, let's just have you start out, just tell us a little bit about you personally. We want to get to know you and then we'll jump into this whole cash-based conversation. All right. Hey, John. Thank you very much for having me tonight. Um, I'm really honored to be here. Uh, let's see. My name is Aaron LeBauer. I live in Greensboro, North Carolina, and I own a 100% cash-based physical therapy practice. It's called LeBauer Physical Therapy. Uh, I've been a physical therapist since 2009, and I started as a massage therapist in 1999 and uh, decided I needed to learn more about the human body, movement, physiology, and Kind of expand and improve my my treatment and the types of people and way I could help people. So I went back to get my doctor of physical therapy degree at Elon, and you know, I love riding bikes and um, vintage scooters is a big one for me. <laughs> and I just started running again, so I'm I'm right on my personal patient centered blog. I, I've blogged a little bit about you know running again after about 15 years not doing that. So. Um, that's that's it. I've got a wife. She teaches private yoga, and I've got and as a massage therapist, I got two little kids. They're three and five. Uh, um, I don't know. Life's good. That's <laughs> cool. Like, Very cool. Yeah, it sounds like you're a fun-loving guy. He loves life. Has family man. So that's just that's a neat. That's really neat, my friend. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. So so tell us. Let's jump into that cash based conversation then. Um, Tell us a little bit about the actual. So, if someone, a therapist, is you know, they got the urge. They're 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 sick of working for insurance payers. They're 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 going to jump out and and into this world of cash based therapy. Um, what's the mindset like when you're going into the cash based realm? Oh, that's a great question. You basically have to kind of flip a switch or kind of gradually get there and say, okay, now I am worth X amount of dollars. Um, because when you see someone, they're paying you, and um, they're paying you directly, and so that's a big one is saying, you know, my treatment session is going to be worth X, but also saying, well, what am I going to do during that time? How am I going to treat the person for an hour? I've, I've had that question a lot, and a big part of that is refocusing your treatment philosophy uh, on treating the patient and spending the time that you need to treat that patient, then there's the whole uh, mindset shift of becoming a primary care direct access provider where you're no longer really getting referrals from the medical community. I, mean, it's, I get so few referrals from physicians. I am going out and seeking patients and finding patients and letting them know about my practice. And that's a huge shift in... Um, in thought and sometimes in comfort if someone's been um, evaluating people who come in with a referral or prescription or a diagnosis already. I see people who don't have a diagnosis or they don't have anything that uh, represents or anything close to why they're having pain and so it makes you a little bit more of a detective in that way um, and also just having that comfort level of doing that is big and a lot of us are trained to do that but practice patterns wise we get out of it and then the the other mindset shift is um, just the whole insurance uh, conversation with patients and being comfortable talking about it and knowledgeable and it incorporates a lot of uh, a lot of knowledge on what is insurance and the benefits and and knowing that not every patient is going to be your patient and that you can't heal everyone, and so there's some people you just have to let go of. Right. Yeah. right. Yeah, those are some key differences that a lot of therapists, I, I know when I was working at an uh, insurance-based outpatient clinic, it was, it was definitely different. So you're, you're, you're basically you're saying that the shift you need to make is that one of a primary care provider now. You're actually looking at that person directly. You don't have a bunch of imaging. You don't have you know, notes from a doctor. You're, you're the primary line of defense for that person, and you need to be looking out for their best interest. Uh, yes. 
and also that you have to go out and find those people that really want to love you and want to be with you and want to have you do that for them. So that is quite a shift, you know, in thinking from a traditional insurance model, I would say. <laughs> yeah, even if even if uh, it's a primary care kind of high mindset, um, th the best way to do that is within a niche, you know, mm -hmm. like if it's a women's health or pelvic floor or chronic pain or, you know, more manual based type of technique. You know, it's yes. It, the, even though oh, I just want to make the point that yes, there should also be a niche yeah. that, uh, where you kind of have a, a very focused specialty on top of all of that. So it's really critical that you, if you're going to go into cash-based model, you that you niche down into something that people know you for, not just being a generalist. Right, or being a generalist who does something that no one else can offer. Okay. In town, whether that's a you know extra you know so then. You're not really a generalist, but you're the person that takes care of things in a way that no one else can offer, whether that's time or treatment technique or facility or, you know, as opposed to just your focus on a specific activity or, or um, syndrome or pain issue movement problem. Okay, perfect. So, so let's say I'm convinced. I'm I'm a therapist. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to take that plunge into the cash-based cash world. What are... Talk, let's talk about the nuts and bolts of getting started and building a cash-based practice. Like, what is step one, in your opinion, that you need to take in order to get the ball rolling? Oh, that's oh, step one. This is a great question. So, if you if you already have a practice, you've got a lot of uh, a lot of the infrastructure already built. So, part of it is saying it's not even just that infrastructure idea of saying I need my now my my business license was saying I need that mindset of this is what I want to do I'm gonna jump in with both feet and go hundred percent at doing it and having that um, ability to take a chance and take a leap and um, and kind of, and kind of just go for it you know not everyone has that and not everyone um, feels like they can do that but that's really what you got to have because a lot of people are going to say, oh, no, that's impossible. You know, so many people taught, told me that what I was trying to do wasn't going to succeed or wasn't a good idea in, in not so many words. But you, know, you just have to kind of have leap of faith that you know what you're doing and you can follow your own intuition, but also surround yourself with people that believe in you. So those are, that, that's the first main kind of step. So basically you're saying gather up your existing clientele, share with them what you're doing, make sure you have some support there before you make the plunge. Is that a good idea? Well, no, not necessarily with the clientele, but with your family, your friends, mentors. Um, you know, the clientele, if you go and ask them, would you pay me X to do the same amount, you know, to do the same thing with you, that's really not where I'm talking about because there's another shift in your clients and patients. Once mm -hmm. you move from a traditional practice to a cash-based practice, people value you differently in what you're offering, and so patience uh, will shift. Uh, but sure. I think you need to find your mentors, your family, your your people that are your advisors in, in, in life that, that support you. They may not understand what you're saying, but you need that support as well as just kind of the mindset shift in your head that, this is what I'm doing. This is going to be a high value for my patients, and I'm going to make it so. Right. Exactly. Yeah. The mindset is crucial in any new business endeavor. So, thank you for sharing that. Uh, what What's the the first business step you need to take? I mean, do you pull the plug on your your insurance company right away, or I mean, what do you what do you do to to move that towards that from a business model standpoint? Mm -hmm. In a if you if you have or if there's a therapist that's already in an existing practice. The first step is to identify or even just write down, this is my new service. You know, my new service is um, dry needling and it's going to be, you know, our evals with treatment and it's going to cost, you know, 100 bucks. And this is what it's going to be. Um, and whatever that is, it needs to be almost a little different than what you're already offering, but it needs to be very different than what um, other people can offer in town. But then the next real step is to say, okay, what is the insurance, the third-party payer who's paying me the least amount of money and I'm seeing the least amount of patients from? So it's the low volume, low reimbursement, the highest hassle, and 
you have to research and find out how much notice do I have to give them? What what does the notice have to say, and how long is it going to take to get off that panel? And you mm -hmm. start and you start there, um, and then move forward from that. If someone doesn't have a practice at all and they're an employee somewhere else, the really the first step is to identify some time during the week where you can start working on your business, and form a uh, corporation and get a business license so that you start having those nuts and bolts um, and researching the name and um, making sure it's not taken and finding a URL so that you can start kind of putting together your internet web presence and business documents. Mm -hmm. So it's, there's two different, I think there's two different paths that will converge in the woods somewhere. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, there is two paths, right? The person who's the employee jumping into it and the person who's an existing clinic owner that jumps into it. So for the existing clinic owner, you're basically saying that they need to cut the insurance, find the insurance that's the biggest hassle, the least reimbursable, and cut that out. And then and then once they, they start doing that, then how do they transition that clinic into that cash-based model? Like how does that transition go from there? Right. I, I think it's, um, it becomes gradual based on the existing um, contracts that have been signed. So some of them can take up to 90 days bef before you're off the panel or become out of network. Um, other ones uh, will be less time, maybe 30 days. And so it becomes a little bit more gradual because you can't just lop everything off. However, some people um, talked about starting a separate business, you know, or a separate business entity to do some of that. And a lot of that depends on the contracts and laws of the state that mm -hmm. a person is in. But it's this gradual shift to offering higher value sessions for patients. So you have your um, your patients who come in, and they their copay is anywhere from twenty five to seventy five dollars nowadays. Um, and they're getting their whatever X amount of time, whether it's 15 or 30 minutes of time, um, versus the person that's coming in who's paying the out-of-network fee or the you know the cash-based fee, which I like to prefer is the out of you know calling it out-of-network as well to patients. They're paying that and they're getting their hour and they're getting all their time is spent with one therapist. And they're getting a lot of attention. They're getting super high value. They're getting a lot of homework and a lot of things to do at home, and they're not spending time in the clinic doing anything that they could they could do on their own. That and that becomes almost like a separate service or a new service or an enhanced service, and transitioning basically existing people but new patients into that because existing people will only value you and your business the way that they have experienced it in the past. So they will value it as the copay. Right. Yeah, no, that's a great point. So yeah, you're, so you're you're suggesting that you know somebody who's a clinic owner right now would you know keep some insurances, but also transition another program or whatever towards that higher value, higher cash based model at the same time, right? To sort of right. build that flow towards that model and kind of gently push everything that way. Uh, is that correct? Yes. And okay. So like in North Carolina, you know, Blue Cross Blue Shield is one of the largest. Uh, insurance uh, provider. So that would here that would be the last private health network that I would probably advise to drop and then Medicare and Medicare is another issue as well but the you know whatever the largest um, biggest volume or the um, provider that's the least uh, cost to collect on all the claims that would be you know, you'd work your way towards that one and then what happens is you start treating less patients, but um, you're almost earning a little bit more because you don't have to pay more, pay more to collect that money. Mm -hmm. And so then it becomes more of a benefit of the clinic owner to start treating more patients in the, with the cash-based model or the cash-based service that is now being offered. Gotcha. Yeah. So, so that's, that makes sense uh, from a clinic, from a, Current clinic owner standpoint. So, so if you're a current current clinic owner, do you you don't have to change anything like business entity wise or legally regulation wise? I'm sure every state may be different, but for you in North Carolina, I mean, do you know if if a current clinic owner would have to change anything from a regulatory standpoint to, in order to start moving towards cash based models? Not business license wise or 
Okay. I think in the Practice Act wise, it was most of that boils down to the contracts that have been signed and what they say. And I've seen some contracts that say you can't do, you can't, you can't treat anyone for a cash-based service. To you can, but it has to be on, you know, on the other side of the county line or the other side of town or outside, you know, five-mile radius, or just open a start a new business entity, which is a couple hundred dollars. Right. And, and that becomes, you know, the new business entity and can be a shift as well too. So there's a lot of different. Uh, nuances to that specifically okay. that's the best thing to get a lawyer involved with really right right okay yeah so that seems like you can you can basically just start shifting to a separate program if you're a current clinic clinic owner right i mean promote mm -hmm. this new program a higher value service for for cash based you know model for a cash based model and then just go ahead and start doing that without any real change if you already have your business kind of in, in place is that correct right and then but there's the change in how you market that service right yeah. Because it can't be the same thing that the next person's getting for twenty-five dollars. Right. It has to be something completely different, or you know, just taking it and saying, okay, this is the service, and I am unable to provide. You know, some people I've I've worked with are are getting to the point where they're having to see four people an hour to pay the bills, and the reimbursement's not coming in. I mean, months later, and they're unable to see patients in an effective way. So it may not even be saying, I can't offer this service anymore. It's saying, I can't be effective and enjoy my life or my job if I am offering this service in this way. And that's enough for a lot of people to make a shift and make a change um, and, and seek something different. Okay. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, we'll touch on the marketing here in a minute. But uh, yeah, great. That, I think that really helps paint a picture um, of kind of the process to at least get that ball rolling. Um, and then for somebody who's an employee who wants to jump into cash-based, um, they would just follow the same guidelines, would you say, other than maybe the marketing uh, that somebody else who would start a regular clinic would find, would follow? Or do you know? And needing to get on insurance panels or right. be enrolled in Medicare. Okay. It's just about getting the business licenses in place, the, all the, you know, the practice location or securing a place to treat people marketing materials and and start uh, and having a documentation system and, right and things like that to keep track of everything perfect yeah cool well, thanks for painting that picture I think that helps a lot of people who are wondering uh, what about managing uh, patients uh, who are cash based I mean do, is there a change in how you do case management um, from a perspective of maybe frequency of visits or uh, do you change your approach a little bit for cash-based patients? Um, I wouldn't change my approach, but it may be that people will find that they are because of the approach they've had to start to take to be profitable in the uh, in a traditional practice. Um, what I do, is, and one of the reasons I started my practice this way is because, um, and I started my practice right out of school, is that I knew I couldn't be happy treating patients in the way that I treated them as a student you know, on my clinical rotations. Um, yeah, I want to see one person an hour. I want to spend the majority of the time using hands-on techniques, manual therapy, myofascial release techniques, and and teaching. I teach my patients to treat themselves at home, and I use gravity-based exercise and modified and therapeutic yoga for my patients to do on their own at home. So I see patients typically once a week, somewhere between three to eight visits on average, sometimes less and sometimes more. Uh, but most people get better and get significantly better within a few weeks, only coming in once once a week. So that's really my approach. And you know, a lot of people are going to have to change or find that they will change to that. But you know, patients who come in are... They, they're super highly motivated to get better and take care of themselves because they are that way and that's why they're seeking me or because they're looking at what I'm providing and buying into what they're reading on our website they become motivated to take care of themselves and treat themselves and you know, they're, they have more skin in the game yeah. in a cash based practice yeah definitely funny how, how having to pay a little more for something motivates us to use it to take it serious and um, right. I think that's probably the case uh, with your practice as well. So, um, what are the what are the clientele like? I mean, are, 
with a cash-based model, I've heard all kinds of stories about, you know, you have to only find wealthy patients or you have to be in a city or a bigger area in order to find enough clients to make a cash-based practice work. Uh, can you speak to those those things? Yeah, I think that that's a great, uh, um, a great question and it's a frequent almost misconception of what the patient population is. Sometimes the patients who are the wealthiest have the best insurance and their copay is five dollars and there's no way they would ever pay you know 50, more than fifty dollars for a treatment I mean even though they might go get um, their hair done for hundred dollars <laughs> they would never pay the same amount for physical therapy because they've been going and getting physical therapy for 10 fifteen dollars for years um, the people that I see are people who value their own health and taking care of themselves a lot of patients who don't want to take medications or don't want surgery, um, just people who value what um, we have. We as physical therapists um, and or and massage therapists, like I'm a massage therapist as well as body workers. People who value body work from a, a physical therapy perspective. I have a lot of those patients, and they're veterans and farmers and truck drivers and accountants, um, students, um, moms and dads, athletes. Pretty much everyone, um, and uh, pretty much the only population I don't see is um, the Medicaid population, because I, part of it's in order to have Medicaid, you don't really have expendable income. Yeah. Right. However, unfortunately, in North Carolina, they only get three visits or three to three visits in PT, no matter what, and um, they have to go to the hospital. So. So, so do you think this model can work in, in, in a fairly decent sized area? I mean, what population criteria do you think that you have to have in order to make that work? I mean, can it work in a town of 5,000 people? Can it, there, does it have to be 30,000, 50,000? I mean, is there some anything to that? Yes, and I don't think it's really dependent on the demographic anymore. I think it's dependent on the value that we bring to the table and um, and, and the fact that there is uh, a skilled, qualified, awesome therapist who's providing <laughs> service that very few other people are able to do. Right. Because uh, insurance um, uh, deductibles are increasing tremendously. Um, you know, people are, a lot of places, people are already cash paying uh, patients based on their deductible, their copay being so high. Um, so I think that, and I do know of therapists who have successful cash-based practices in small towns of a couple thousand people and large towns, cities like New York City and, and Washington, D.C. and San Francisco. And in medium-sized towns, the place where I live is 180,000 people. Yeah. But I have people coming from an hour away sometimes to see me or, or further based on uh, a personal recommendation or testimonial they've read. You know, people come from long distance to see me, and they've got the buy-in from other people. And so I think that, yes, it doesn't really matter what size town you're in. You have to, you just have to offer something that's awesome and super high value, and people will um, recognize that. So it's just, you know, you just about you and your value and what you bring then. It's the free market model, right? We're getting more and more towards that free market, free economy. If you're good, you get it. You get people, you get paid, you build a business. If you're not, then you don't. It's sort of the model. So, uh, yeah. So how do you how do you market to these folks? I mean, you kind of define the demographic a little bit, which I thought was great. Uh, how do you how do you go about uh, marketing a cash based business? I mean, there's a lot more of that involved than a lot of probably former clinic owners who were insurance based models uh, were using. So can you speak about that? Yes. Um, the best way that I've found to market my practice and that, that works is twofold. There's um, creating personal relationships. So Aaron Bauer is the number one referral source for my practice. Mm -hmm. So when I track referrals, it's who referred you? Well, they people that know me. Um, yeah. It's not my friends, but it's getting out into the community, um, meeting other fitness professionals, working with other um, healthcare professionals who are not physicians um, and are not physicians' offices. Um, my wife and I did a uh, power yoga and back care workshop this past weekend at one of the local yoga studios. And we had 20 people show up for the two-hour workshop. And I think 
think the next day, I, or no, that afternoon, I got a message by email from someone who wanted to book an appointment with my wife for a massage. So we already got a patient out of it, and we have 20 people who are exposed to our um, care and our ideas and know who we are, um, that type of thing. And then, on the other hand, it's the internet website and blog. I think it's essential that every private practice um, whether it's uh, traditional insurance-based or cash, has a, has a website that's interactive um, and a blog, and um, making sure that either Google Local Places page or Google um, Plus you know, page has been claimed and filled out mm -hmm. because people are looking for us online. They're looking about for their condition online, and... Sometimes I've looked up therapists and I even type their name into Google and I can't find any information about them and they own a private practice. And it's like if someone's looking for Aaron LeBauer, they're going to find Aaron LeBauer online. And that's the way it needs to be um, to market a, a practice successfully these days. So are you talking about using the online part as simply sort of like a business card that you can show people who you are and if you don't have that, it's a, like a black mark or are you getting, say, like search engine traffic in your community? To your site? I love that question. That's a great question. Because, um, no. <laughs> the answer is no. Your business, your, your business card belongs on your desk or in someone's pocketbook and not on the internet. Um, the website um, should list the benefits of what a patient will experience when they come to their practice, not, my qualifica not the qualifications. Qualifications and courses taken... Um, patients don't care about that. They want to know how are they going to feel when they come into your practice. And that's the pictures on the on the website um, and the information on the website should talk to the patients. Mm -hmm. The other thing that needs to happen is you need to have some way to capture patients or potential patients who visit your website even before they're ready for therapy. And the way that I do that is offer a free ebook on back pain on my website. And people enter in their name and email address in exchange for free, awesome, valuable information that can help them today, even if they're not ready to um, come see me for therapy or if they live you know, in another state. Perfect. All right. What's uh, one pro and one con to having a cash-based practice? Okay. Well, my, my, I'll start with the <laughs> like that. Con, my con is that I'm isolated as a professional, so I don't have other physical therapists around me who I can talk to on my lunch break or you know confer about a patient with. I have to you know do that with um, people. A network of other therapists I've developed over the years. My first year in private practice was very lonely and isolating professionally in that way. Um, so that would be the con, but. The pro is that I get to set my own schedule. I work for myself. No, I don't have anyone looking over my shoulder, and I don't have to spend hours of time on the phone being frustrated trying to collect payment that has been promised or owed to me. Um, and one of the other thing, the the one of the other things that I think ties into that is that because I don't have to do that, when that patient comes in the door, I. I do not. Ha I do not have to see them, and this is a pro. I do not have to see them as their payment. You know, I do not have to see John as Sally, the administrator, not wanting to pay me, and having those two things come together because I'm the one doing all of that. And um, that's a huge thing, and it's yeah. a huge pro for me having a cash-based practice. More clarity, less hassle with with the third-party guy squeaking in your ear. So that's that's definitely a pro. Um, last question here, and. I think this is kind of boil everything down for us. Like this whole conversation has been great. You've painted a lot of pictures for us. Um, what if you had to boil it all down and a friend came up to you and said, Aaron, I, I want to learn how to start a cash-based practice. What's one piece of advice you would give them? <laughs> yeah, okay, one piece of advice. Okay. The, the main thing is... Um, have a skill and confidence in using that skill that you can bring to the table to create a valuable treatment session for a patient. Um, you know, and that would probably mean going to multiple continuing education seminars and learning some hands-on skills because I think the value of the human touch is huge and people will pay to be touched. Um, yep. 
people get very frustrated when they go see someone and they haven't even been touched where their body hurts. And so I think that's the number one thing is learn how to touch people because okay. people, people love it. People love it. They do. All right, Aaron. Well, hey, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Let's just wrap things up by uh, telling everybody where they can find out more about you and your services, and then we'll wrap things up. Okay. Uh, you can go to www.labauerconsulting.com, and you should see it on the bottom of the screen, but Labauer is spelled L-E-B as in boy, A-U-E-R. Or just put in Google Aaron Labauer um, Consulting or uh, and you should find me. I'm also on Twitter at LeBauerPT. At LeBauerPT. And um, I've got LinkedIn as well as Aaron LeBauer. And LinkedIn has a great cash based practice forum. If you're interested in it, come on over to that forum too. It's very active. Beautiful. All right, Aaron. Thank you so much for sharing your knowledge today with all of us. Uh, we appreciate that very much. Thank you very much, John. I appreciate being here. I'm honored. All right. Thank you. All right, everybody. I hope you enjoyed that conversation with uh, Dr. LeBauer on the cash-based therapy model. Uh, we'll link up, a, definitely have a replay of this uh, discussion probably by Wednesday. You can go over to newwavehealthcare.com forward slash Aaron LeBauer or just simply go to the search bar and type in Aaron and his show notes page will pop right up. Uh, as always, you can go over to the newwavehealthcare.com forward slash live dash interviews to check out all our up, up and coming interviews for each week. Uh, we generally do our interviews on Monday. Uh, we are shifting our niche more into the digital health, health and technology field. So Aaron, you, you brought us home awesome with the therapy uh, talk and discussion today. I thought it was an inspiring and important topic that any therapist or rehab professional who is thinking about doing their own thing should, should hear. So, um, all right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed this discussion, and I will see you next Monday. I will talk to you then.